fellow DECA students and students who just want the extra help, I'm going to walk you through our article analysis now. If you go into our research paper, our nice orange folder, and you go into our white resources folder, and you go into our purple and article analysis folder, you will see your article analysis grading sheet. I already have that pulled up. And then I want you to focus on the Endangered Oceans Article Analysis. I feel like this is the most concise and clear-cut example I can give you. Okay, so first I'm going to make sure we have access to the Article Analysis Sheet and then our Article Analysis, our Exemplar. So, make sure you have your proper MOE heading. Question set one. Question set one is, what is the writer's thesis? What claims are being asserted? What assumptions are being made? Are important terms satisfactorily defined? Okay, if you go directly to our bullet point one, this person has decided to bullet point, no problem. Offshore drilling will accelerate global warming as the title. They put that at the top. Okay, what is the writer's thesis? The author's thesis is that the continuation of offshore drilling will guarantee the burning of fossil fuels, which will accelerate global warming. What claims are being asserted? What assumptions are being made? He claims that the limitation of offshore oil will keep prices high, thus forcing Americans to innovate and transition to alternative sources of fuel. The author assumes that the offshore oil rush will accelerate climate change. The author does a good job of Oops, sorry, look. Are important terms satisfactorily defined? The author does a good job of defining and elaborating on abbreviated terms. That, sat that satisfies the terms. Abbreviations also count as terms. The author does a good job of defining and elaborating on abbreviated terms such as ANWR or Arctic National Wildlife Refuge and EPA or Environmental Protection Agency. Second bullet point, um, sometimes a, as you will note from our other video, sometimes the student author will decide to blend this next part uh, into the first bullet point or vice versa, blend elements from the first bullet point into the second. This author, this student author, did a very good job of just keeping things completely clear cut. So question set two. What support is offered on behalf of the claim? Are the examples relevant and are they convincing? If authorities are cited, are they indeed authorities on the topic and can they be regarded as impartial? Is the argument logical, valid? Is there an appeal to the reader's emotions? And is this appeal acceptable? So let's go, just go bit by bit here. What support is offered on behalf of the claim? The examples otherwise known as support. The examples used in the article are relevant and convincing because he uses statistics that describe the number of barrels and gallons of oil spilled in the ocean. Now note, they're not giving us all of the statistics. They're not telling us what numbers are being used. They are telling us what support. What support? What type of support is it? It is statistics that describe the number of barrels and, uh, and gallons of oil spilled. Okay. Now, um, are the examples relevant and convincing? These make his claim stronger because he is emphasizing the large amounts of oil spilled and the effect it has on the, globe, on the climate and global warming. Okay. Now he's going to get to our authorities question at the very end, right? So let's just take a moment here. He goes right to, is the author's argument logical? The author's argument is logical because he uses reasonable data to support his claim. The next question, is there an appeal to the reader's emotions and is this appeal acceptable? The appeal to the reader's emotional side comes from the statistics as well. The brief yet substantial description of some spills that have happened close to the time the article was written are mentioned and used as support. Now I said he'll come back to the author's reference, uh, the author's question. Um, I'm sorry, authority's question. If authorities are cited, are they indeed authorities on this topic and can they be regarded as impartial? 
there are no authorities cited. Fair enough. If there are no authorities cited, I don't have to worry about the second part. Are they, in, are they indeed authorities? And can they be regarded as impartial? Okay. Now our third point. Question set three. Does the writer seem to be fair? <clears throat> the author is more impartial to his own viewpoint and sticks with the fact that drilling affects climate change and is the cause of global warming. However, the author does acknowledge the fact that drilling practices and technology have improved. Now, when we say things like, this is certainly answers, first, this certainly answers the question, but when we say things like the author is more impartial to his own viewpoint, it's more straightforward to say something along the lines of the author is not impartial, right? Just be more cut and dry about that. But nonetheless, um, this is exemplary work because it answers every single question so very clearly. We can go into our second one here too, do the same thing. What is the writer's thesis? What claims are being asserted? What assumptions are being made? Are important terms satisfactorily defined? Now, this is the opposing viewpoint to our first article. This is offshore drilling will not accelerate, accelerate global warming. Author's thesis. The author's thesis is that the right of Americans to have access to inexpensive oil is more important than environmental concerns. What are his claims? He claims that 294.7 billion barrels of offshore and on-land oil are currently going to waste in the U.S. He also cites that statistic because that's important. He assumes that the, that the claim that Earth is running out of oil is false. Okay, so what assumptions is the author making? He's making this assumption, that the Earth is running out of oil is false. The author does a good job of defining abbreviated terms such as National Environmental Policy Act, Clear Water Act, and Endangered Species Act. You don't have to tell me what those acts mean. You don't have to tell me anything else about them. Just the fact that they were satisfactorily defined satisfies this question. Okay, let's go into question two, question set two. What support is offered on behalf of the claim? Are the examples relevant and are they convincing? If authorities are cited, are they indeed authorities on the topic and can they be regarded as impartial? Is the argument logical, valid? Is there an appeal to the reader's emotions and is this appeal acceptable? The author analyzes alternative energy and comes to the conclusion that it is not helpful in the crisis he believes we are in today. He states that the U.S. rules 85% of its offshore oil off limits, uh, yet, the, yet the Chinese drill just offshore of Cuba, which is just 90 miles away from Florida. This example is relevant and convincing because it shows readers, it shows the reader that yet, that yet the U.S. is not drilling, but other countries are fairly close by. The argument is logical because the data the author provides makes his claim stronger. The author's quote, you can't pour wind and solar energy into a gas tank, again cited, appeals to readers' emotional side because gasoline directly impacts their daily life and makes them think about what they would do without this resource, which is very acceptable. There are no authorities cited in this article. Okay, so are there examples and are they convincing? In this instance, the student author gives us the example. He does tell us it's relevant and convincing. Again, the authorities are addressed at the end. There, are, again, are no authorities cited in this article. Is the argument logical? Valid? Is there an appeal to readers' emotions? The argument is logical because. See that? Um, there is an appeal to the reader's emotional side. They discuss that. It is acceptable. They address that. Finally, does the writer seem to be fair? The author is more impartial to his own viewpoint and sticks with the claim the drilling is necessary and not the cause of global warming. However, the author does acknowledge the fact that drilling is risky, costly, and has an aging, understaffed workforce. Again, properly cited. Okay, so again, uses this term, is more impartial to his own viewpoint. It's a little weird, but um, the other items were so uh, clearly and concisely addressed that I did not take off points for that weird wording.
Okay, so then as you see here, everything is accounted for in this rubric. That is exactly how you are graded. Best of luck. If you have any questions, feel free to email myself or Ms. Lynn, and we will get back to you in a very timely fashion. Hope this is helpful.